Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this Warcraft Rumble Guide, I'm going to take a look at the best talents for all of your minis. I last made a video like this four and a half months ago for the global launch, and well, a lot has happened in four and a half months. Some new minis have been added, there have been some balance changes, even my thinking on some of the minis has changed during this time, especially now that I have played four and a half months more of Rumble, so trying to push into very high difficulty dungeons and heroics. And let's take a look at all of the minis. First of all, the basics. You get your first talent when your mini reaches uncommon, and you cannot switch until you reach rare, so that's very important. You open one talent slot per difficulty, and only one talent is active at a time. So when you reach uncommon, you have one talent slot, and that talent is going to be active. You can also deactivate it, but still you only have one option. When you get your mini to rare, you have two talent slots, and one of those talents can be active, and then you can switch between the two. And I can't overemphasize that there is no way to change the talents that you buy to your talent slots. When you have bought a talent for your mini, you're stuck with that talent forever. And then you need to get higher rarity so that you will get more options. So talent choices are quite important. In general, when you're buying talents, you're looking for something completely new for the mini. You're looking for additional damage for the mini, especially poison. Poison is something that I have grown to appreciate more and more over these months. So I have rated poison talents now a little bit higher than I did four months ago. Then ways to control the game, especially stun and freeze, which I still find very useful. Post reduction, survivability. I have added chapters to this video, so you can just click on the chapter of the mini that you want to take a look at to find the best talent for each mini. Let's start. Starting from leaders and alliance leaders, the first up is Jaina Proudmore. Jaina has three talent options, Blink, Clearcasting and Flurry. And currently Clearcasting is by far the most popular option. It's used to create tempo spikes with spells, so you play Jaina and then you play spells. For example, Arcane Blast, especially when you have Arcane Blast that goes to three and four mana versions of it, then quickly casting those with Clearcasting with Jaina can deal a lot of damage. Personally, I like Flurry the best. I play a lot of PvE. I do like the control Flurry gives you in PvE. Because normally, Jaina's projectiles do apply Frost to the target, but only to one target. And with Flurry, it applies Frost to everybody nearby, so all of those enemies will move slower and attack slower. And I think that just gives you a lot of advantages in group fights. Then there's Blink, which was the early favorite. But it can be a little bit unpredictable in where it's going to teleport chain and it seems to have overall much less of an effect than the other two talents. Here in Four Rings talents are Divine Shield, Consecrate and By the Light. And typically the most useful out of these is Divine Shield. Divine Shield gain a magical shield at 30% health, absorbing all damage for 5 seconds. So this just gives Tyrion so much more survivability. Tyrion is going to keep healing up under that Divine Shield. Just a wonderful, wonderful ability. If Tyrion is your main tank, then this is by far the best. There are some instances where Tyrion is coming in the second line, so you have something else tanking and Tyrion is healing that, where by the light, because it heals the primary targets for twice as much, can be more useful than Divine Shield. But overall, Divine Shield is something that you cannot go wrong with. And then there is Consecrate. Regularly Consecrate the ground damaging enemies within, which is less useful than the other two. Tyrion's damage is generally very lackluster, and Consecrate adds some area of effect damage for Tyrion, but typically you don't bring Tyrion for the damage, you have something else that deals the damage, and Tyrion is there to tank and or heal. So Consecrate is just a little bit less useful for Tyrion's main roles. My F Shadow Song's talents are enveloping shadows, shadow step, and remorseless. And out of these options, I do like Remorseless by far the best. Remorseless deal double damage for two seconds after killing an enemy. And Maiev, when Maiev comes out of stealth, Maiev deals AoE damage, which often kills something, and then Maiev can hit with double damage. And I just find that really, really strong. Some people do use enveloping shadows, cast smoke bomb and deploy, stealthing nearby allies, and so they do it in a deck where they would want to stealth some stuff, but they don't want to use a slot for a smoke bomb, so then Maya is a smoke bomb, plus it's a damage dealing mini, so it can be kind of an option. And then the shadow step, purely get teleport to a ranged attacker when hit, but that is kind of niche, Maya is unbound anyway, so you typically already get Maya where you want it. And that Remorseless just deals so much damage that it's really hard to ignore. Then the Beast Leaders, and the first Beast Leader is Old Murkai. And Old Murkai actually has three talents that 
all see play. The tip of the spear, Marathon of the Murlocs and Electric Eels. By far the most popular option is Marathon of the Murlocs, which gives you five more seconds to deploy stuff so that you will get Murlocs. So you get more time to get Tide Hunters. You typically get one or two more Tide Hunters during that time period. You can also try to get two waves of, of Tide Hunters going so that they're less vulnerable to area of effect damage. So Marathon of the Murlocs definitely has plenty of upsides. I actually slightly prefer Electric Eels, but I think I'm in the minority. Because Electric Eels attacks briefly stun enemies. Murkai can do some hilarious stuff with those stuns. But Murkai is fragile, so often Murkai dies to something else while it was stunning, stunning a target. So yeah, I can see that Eels is not always great, but especially enemies that attack slowly. And Murkai attacks pretty fast, and Murkai just keeps stunning them so that they can't do much of anything. But typically it's of course a group fight, so you only stun individual targets. Anyway, it has some nice applications. And finally, there's Tip of the Spear. Tidehunters spawn at Old Murkai's location instead. Tip of the Spear is kind of vulnerable to AoE, because now everything is going to spawn in the same location. That's why it's not very often used in PvP, other than when it's Heroes Resolve. Because when it's Heroes Resolve, Murkai gains levels when you play it, then those Murlocs are actually also going to gain levels if you have Tip of the Spear, and that can make them really powerful. And in PvE you can launch some quick attacks with Tip of the Spear if you get a forward position and then you deploy Murkai and you get a lot of Murlocs right from there and then you can just make a really rapid push. Although sometimes I do prefer that Murlocs are coming at my base so they also defend my base, so upsides and downsides. Anyway, all three talents for Murkai are actually viable. Hogger can be a hilarious leader. Every time you deploy Hogger, it just becomes faster and attacks faster, and it's just going to run around and slap things. And generally, the best talent for Hogger is Hamhog. Hogger also gains plus 10% max health each time he is deployed. It does cap at 3 stacks, and it's additive, not multiplicative, so it's plus 30% health at most. But that increased survivability typically helps Hogger. Hogger already gets a lot of damage from its other abilities, so that survivability just keeps Hogger alive. There is another contender though, which is Spoiled Meat, Gain Poison. Because the faster Hogger hits, the more poison stacks Hogger applies. And especially in dungeons, if you can get the Lifesteal Relic, then Hogger with Spoiled Meat is a huge tank. Hogger cannot buff Fire Elemental in any of its army slots, so with Lifesteal you don't really have great options with Hogger, unless you have Hogger with Spoiled Meat, in which case then you just have a tank right there, so Spoiled Meat is also, also a good alternative. Whereas Fatal Frenzy on that Bloodlust nearby beast, that doesn't seem to do much in most Hogger decks. Hogger decks are typically built around Hogger specifically, so Hogger has like two good talents. Chalga Razor Flank is a bit of a weird leader, because she mixes up the costs of minis. So many people don't like her, but I think she's actually a wonderful leader. And all of her talents can see play in various circumstances. The generally most useful is Cavernous Mists, deploy cost reduced by one, so that reduces the cost of Chalga. So limited amount of cost reduction, but cost reduction is still so okay, it makes it easier to just cycle through things really quickly. Another one that I like a lot is Spirit Passage, although it's much more situational. Because mini is played for 5 gold, can level and deploy in stealth. So you need to have some kind of mini with at 5 gold cost in your deck, so that you can have 5 cost in your deck, so that you, something will get to stealth. I use that with Chimera. Chimera costs 5, and then I can get stealth gargoyles, or I can get stealth sappers going out, so... There are some really fun instances where you can make good use of Spirit Passage, but I must admit that it's very situational and it requires you to have a 5 gold mini in your deck or otherwise it does absolutely nothing. And then there's Nature's Grasp, route 2 additional nearby targets but deal half damage. So that's very situational because you often want to just route 1 and deal damage to that one, but sometimes, sometimes when you want more control then even Nature's Grasp can be useful. So that would pretty much be the order that I would recommend to pick these. Mists first, then Spirit Passage, and Nature's Grasp last. Emperor Tourism's talents are more sweet, hubris and incinerate. And out of these, hubris is the strongest. It gives non-elemental minis plus two bonus levels after playing Taurisan, and that's just that's just totally bonkers. Plus two levels on an abomination or a gargoyle. Or, yeah, it's just super, super strong. Then there's Incinerate. Lava Spikes Burn is permanent. 
However, it's actually not permanent on bosses and on bases. It is double time on those. It's not permanent burn, it's just like two burns back to back. So it's not quite as useful, but it does mean that anything that Taurusan is going to burn is going to die if it's a mini eventually, even though Taurusan would die before. So it has its uses, but generally Hubris is stronger. And then there's Moiras with the healing ability, but it just does not heal enough to warrant picking that. So there's quite clear Hubris Incinerate to do best talents for this one. General Dragizet has one talent clearly above all others, which is Chromatic Scales, grants nearby allies the resistant trade. It helps protect your other troops, and then if you combine Dragizet with a Shaman, who will give Dragizet armored, and then Dragizet will give the Shaman resistant, so it's just it's just really, really strong and clearly the best talent for Dragizet. I have also played with Piercing Blows. Piercing Blows can be the best attacks pierce true enemies in line, like in some situations, but generally it just it just doesn't compare to chromatic scales really. And neither does Lasting Legacy, which is even worse than Piercing Blows. So clear picking order for Dragizet talents, scales, blows, legacy. Red Black Hand has two useful talents. First, there's Scale and Steel, which is the basic pick for Rend. It's the most versatile talent. Gain resistant while flying and armored while dismounted. So no matter what your Rend is going to face, Rend is always going to be resisting some of the damage, either in its flying form or in its unmounted form. So that's just really good at making Rend tankier. And then there's Flaming Soul, and I have to admit I'm a bit of a Flaming Soul connoisseur myself. I really love that talent. I use that talent a lot. Cast Living Bomb upon dismounting, damaging nearby enemies. So it casts a 6 gold spell for free, but it's only good if there's a group of enemies around Rend when Rend is dismounted. But when there's large groups and you get that all going off, and it's just totally amazing. I, I love that talent so much, even though just looking at average performance, Scale and Steel is clearly the best one. And then there's Legionnaire, which is largely useless. Sneed used to be a leveling machine, but Land Grab was nerfed to only trigger when Sneed before Greed triggers, so you have to have Siege damage units getting your gold, and that makes Sneed much weaker nowadays. So now actually there's a bit more competition on Sneed talents. Mine is Money Friend, makes Sneed a fast miner. Sneed is actually going to mine an entire deposit in one go. Zoop, and gold is just yours. So it's a bit situational. But depending on the map, it can even be the best one because Need is a great miner with that talent. Then there's Lead with Greed. I actually have played with Lead with Greed a bunch recently. And it can give you some extra gold. So when you're sending Sneed out to open chests, then that gold is just pouring in and it can be really useful. And then there is Land Grab, which requires siege damage units to either destroy towers, capture meeting stones, or open chests. So it's really hard to get levels from that. Like you can get one level, can you get two? It's just too hard to get levels out of that nowadays, I think. Although some people still consider that one the best Sneed talent. So no matter which one you pick, you can't go too wrong because they all have their places nowadays, with Land Grab no longer being clearly the superior choice. Romash Hellscream has two good talents and then he has Bladestorm, which sucks. Don't pick Bladestorm. I personally like Savage Strikes a lot. Savage Strikes deal double damage to enemies who are below 50% health. So when you're doing these boss fights and the boss doesn't die immediately on the first push and then the boss stays alive, damaged, and then Grom gets to that with Savage Strikes and then, then that health bar is just going to disappear. I, ju I just love it, it's so wonderful. Although many people also prefer Mirror Images. Mirror Images add damage earlier, because immediately when Grom enters combat, then it summons these two images. And the images spawn at the sides of the target, and they taunt when they spawn. So that gets the attention away from Grom for a while. For example, if Grom is attacking a Dragon Tower, then it turns around a little bit to blast at the image, and Grom starts whacking away. So. Images definitely have their moments, and it's kind of hard to say which one is better. With mirror images, the attack is front-loaded. With Savage Strikes, it comes a little bit later. But when you're trying to get some big boss down, and you know that it will take multiple attacks, then Savage Strikes is just a wonderful option. Okay, and Bloodhoof, I just, I just like reincarnation so much. After that, Resurrected 50% health once. And Cairn, also if you make Cairn armored, the Resurrected Cairn is going to stay armored, for example. So 
it's just a lovely talent. I like to build these slow-ish death balls with Cairn. And then it's just useful that Cairn stays with the slow death ball and then Cairn dies, but then it comes back and continues fighting. Although there is another way to play Cairn, which is planes running. Move 50% faster and gain the fast rate. Because then Cairn is a tank that just runs into battle. So that can also be useful, but then you need to build a bit of a different army so that the rest of the army can also keep up with Cairn. But that's definitely an option if you like a little bit faster playstyle. And then there's Aftershock, which doesn't seem to do all that much, so it's mostly between Reincarnation and Planes Running. Baron Rivender has been nerfed a couple of times, and it's been kind of a stealthy nerf because none of the text has been changed. But all the nerfs have become to Chill of the Grave. Chill of the Grave nowadays does no longer summon minis when tower is still building, and it summons them slower than it used to. And Chill of the Grave is still the best talent for Baron Rivender, because it summons skeletal mages instead of warriors, and the skeletal mages are really, really good. So that's just that's just my main recommendation for Baron Rivender. The other two can also be used. Death Pack can be built around. Periodically sacrifice a nearby skeleton to be healed, because then Baron Rivender just becomes this tank that just keeps lasting and lasting as long as you can keep supplying skeletons. So that is not a bad talent either. And then the skeletal frenzy nearby allied skeletons gain bloodlust. But you typically just don't have that mass of skeletons, so it, it's a little bit weaker. It's hard to get enough skeletons around Baron. So Chill of the Grave still remains the best Baron talent. With Death Pact being something that you can build around, it can be hilarious. But in overall strength, it just does not match those skeletal mages. For Blood Mage Talnus, the choice tends to be a very easy one, because Bane playing a spell increases attack speed by 30% for 5 seconds, so that's Bloodlust levels. So basically you play any spell and you Bloodlust your Talnus. And that's a huge damage increase and Talnus is a damage dealer, so it's just, it's great. I love it. Dominant spells costing 4 more grand than additional level, it's clunky, it's hard to play that many expensive spells, and they also don't carry over in death, so... Yeah, it's hard to make that good use of that. And then there's Drain Life with Gain Life Steal, which was nerfed in beta, and then it was buffed a little bit after the global launch. But it still drains too little life, so it just doesn't compare to all the damage that you can put out with Bane. The talent for Sylvanas Windrunner is also pretty easy pick, because it's Black Arrow. And pierce through enemies in a line, dealing elemental damage. Black Arrow just adds so much damage to Sylvanas, I... I don't, I don't see the other talents competing at all. Like, yeah, there's Banshee's Whale Scream and Death stunning nearby enemies for 3 seconds. Yeah, Banshee survives, gets to steal something, but usually that something is already at low health, so the Banshee Steel is not, not as useful as a Banshee Steel that you can perfectly dictate yourself. And for second Fury with the Fury on Horde and Undead minis, it's, it's really hard to build around. So Black Arrow is just phenomenal for Sylvanas, and that should be your first choice. So those were all the leaders, and then let's take a look at all of the troops, and there's plenty here, so let's get going. First we have Abomination. And I've actually changed my mind about Abomination a little bit, because I have grown to appreciate Poison more and more. The more I play, the more I think that Poison is just going to kill everything, and Poison is always the best choice, pretty much. So, Noxious Presence. Adds a good chunk of damage to the mini. Abomination typically already has survivability. Maybe you play it with a shaman, give it armored, and it's really, really tanky. So then when it keeps poisoning stuff, then stuff also dies around it. And that's why I like Noxious Presence the best nowadays. I've also played a bunch with Cannonball. On deploy and at 50% health, stun nearby enemies for 5 seconds. And that is one long stun. And sometimes when you get into a defensive position and you can drop your abomination so that on deploy it stuns stuff and that just turns everything around, that's great. But you usually don't want to get into positions like that, and that reduces the effectiveness of Cannonball. And then there's Fresh Meat after hooking a target deal double damage on the next attack, but that's typically just lackluster. It just doesn't deal enough damage, there's not always enough targets to hook, and without hooking it does nothing, whereas Noxious Presence is just steady damage and increasing damage over time. Over these last four months, Angry Chickens have become one of my favorite minis, I kid you not. When you have a single target damage dealer, like Prowler or Stonehoof Torin, and you drop Angry Chickens on that, then it's just going to get obliterated. And that's why the talent that I like best for this nowadays is Furious Foul. Gain Fury, so chickens deal even more damage. And chickens are glass cannons, 
but you just accept that, you often drop them defensively, drop them at your own base and you want them to attack immediately. Everything goes in immediately, so Furious Foul is just, just the best talent for that. Walking Great actually is probably the weakest talent, it can help your chickens get to the target. It's also hilarious at Nashala, one of the encounters, where you get mirages of your units, and if you get Walking Great then you get two crates, so you get double the chickens. But overall, it just doesn't fit with the way I typically play with chickens nowadays. And then the sacrifice nearby beast allies can consume a chicken to heal themselves. Could be useful beast, but I, I actually haven't found any, any really good uses for that. I just always use Furious Fowl if given the opportunity, because it's just the way chickens are meant to be played. Walking Blast, I've actually seen people use all of the talents. In general, Arcane Power, spell sequence starts at rank 3 and ends at rank 4, means that you get the most powerful spells of Arcane Blast. Because Arcane Blast rank 1 and rank 2 are not that effective for the gold cost, but rank 3 and especially rank 4 are. So that makes the spell hit much harder. Then you play it with Jaina with clear casting, so that spells are cheaper with Jaina. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's just blast, blast away. So that's one use of Arcane Blast. Another one, you might have Amplification, Sequential Taps increase Radius by 1, if you want to use this with Talnos. So do you start from 1, so the Talnos can start getting levels, and boom, 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 and then it just becomes bigger and bigger. And if you get to that 4 with Amplification, the biggest damage, the biggest area. That's just wonderful. I've also seen some people like Torrent gain a level after casting rank 4, but personally I find that really difficult. I haven't been able to make good use of that at all. It's so hard to be able to cast rank 4 and then it would gain a level and yeah, the fights, I just can't make good use of that. But Arcane Power and Amplification both have their uses, also a little bit with different leaders. For Banshee, my choice is clear. Will of the Necropolis fully heal the possessed target? I think that's just by far the strongest talent for Banshee. It's just tremendously good. Then you, you can use Banshee very flexibly. Note that no matter what talent you pick for Banshee, the Sylvanas Banshee won't have that talent, so it doesn't help with there, because Will of the Necropolis on Sylvanas would be great, but no, that's not available. Still, it's a great talent. Then there's Unholy Frenzy for that Bloodlust, but 10 seconds of Bloodlust, how much does it even do if you use Banshee very defensively at your own base? Then the mini runs away a little bit faster, but it's just not so good. And Solar Option possess targets detonate on death, then that's also, that's also weaker. Will of the Necropolis just makes Banshee so incredibly flexible that I would always pick it first. Bat Raider is a mini that I have also seen played with all three talents, although by far the most common and generally the strongest one is Enchanted Vials. Increase the size of the Flaming Bull by 30%. You often have a tank, you have a frontline, there's a fight going on, then Enchanted Vials allows your Flaming Bull to just hit more targets, and well, that's just good, that's more damage. I do like Flaming Peach as well, and I originally preferred Flaming Peach over Enchanted Vials, but the more I play, the more I come to the opinion that Enchanted Vials is actually better. Flaming Peach is great when Bat Raid is sent alone against melee troops, so something like Son of Arugal maybe, sometimes you use Bat Rider to slow down everything so that they don't reach your base, they will burn. Or something like Sneed, the map in a dungeon, where Bat Rider from a bridge can control many of the copies that come out and then it can slow them down so they don't reach anywhere. There are still places where I like Flaming Pitch, but I have to reluctantly admit that the Enchanted Vials is better. Then there's Fire Surplus, accidentally vials on the ground burning nearby enemies that touch them. Well, those vials are dropped every 12 seconds. There are not that many vials that are going to be dropped. Sure, they deal a bit of damage to enemies that pass them, but those vials are just not effective enough for my taste, so I would pick between the vials and the pitch. Blizzard has a clear best talent, and that's Cold Snap. Freeze enemy troops in place. It's by far the best, it ensures full damage, it limits their movement, it buys you time, and it ensures that every single point of Blizzard damage is going to be applied. It's just a tremendously good talent. Sure, there's size crown summons an additional Blizzard at your base, some defensive power, some more defensive DPS, but it's just nowhere near the level of Cold Snap. And brutalize enemies within take 30% additional damage from physical sources, but that requires that you have physical damage dealers where you play Blizzard, and that's just really hard to set up, so not worth it. Cold Snap, by far the best one. For Chain Lightning, I generally use Brilliant Flash. 
it stuns, and stuns can be powerful. One effect that stuns also have is that stuns force the enemy to retarget. So if you stun an enemy even if for just one second, then when it wakes up, it's going to start attacking the nearest target again. So it's going to change its target. So sometimes that ability can also be really powerful. Then there's reverberation can be cast a second time, that adds more flexibility, more damage to the spell, can be okay, and Storm's Reach dramatically increased jump distance between targets, but I don't find targets that are so far apart that then this would then jump between them, but the regular one wouldn't. I don't find that happening nearly often enough, so I don't really like Storm's Reach, but Brilliant Flash and Secondary Reverberation. For Cheat Death I highly prefer Vampirism. Vampirism affected minis are healed when dealing damage. So you cast Cheat Death and your minis survive and then they can heal up if they're not attacked all the time. So I think that's just a tremendously good talent and I like that a lot. Of the other two talents, Seal Fate, well it could be useful for some final pushes but I don't like it very much. It limits the use of spell otherwise and you can just use a Execute with Bloodlust applied if you want that effect. And then there's Apocalypse. And some people have used Apocalypse sometimes in a very specific builder deck, like afflicted skeletons resurrect at your base when they die. So that then you can get those skeletons back. So it has some very niche uses, but it's not nearly as generic as Vampirism. Chimera has slowly become one of my favorite minis, and by far my favorite talent for Chimera is Corrosive Breath, because I like poison nowadays so much. Poison is, poison is the way to beat everything in this game. So Corrosive Breath adds a lot of damage, it doubles the poison stacks, typically when Chimera hits something with poison it applies two stacks of poison, and with Corrosive Breath it applies four stacks of poison with each hit. So <laughs> there's just no comparison. Then there's Leviathan. There's a little bit more survivability, also stacks at 3, additive, so it's 30% max health at most. So yeah, it's sort of okay, but it just doesn't add the DPS that Corrosive Breath does. And then there's Frost Shock. Lightning Ball applies Frost on hit, but that is the weakest. The Poison Head is always going to shoot first. When you see a new target, Poison Head will shoot, then the Lightning Head will shoot. So you don't apply the Frost Effect immediately, and you also can't keep up the Frost Effect all of the time, because Chimera attacks so slowly. So for those reasons, I actually think Frost Shock is a little bit lackluster, but Corrosive Breath is just totally bonkers and... I highly, highly recommend getting that first. Gorehounds have one great talent and that's Eternal Bond. Resurrection range is unlimited. So you split your Gorehounds and then one of them dies in a fight and the other resurrects it from the other side of the map. That's just incredibly powerful talent and it should be a first pick. And there's Fiery Rebirth, Resurrection damage is nearby enemies, okay, nice I guess, and Guard Dog, which makes it deal a little bit more da damage when it's on defense. but. Those are just really lackluster compared to Eternal Bond. Darkai Miner has an interesting talent set. I actually think that it has two pretty strong talents and one a little bit weaker one. And one of the stronger ones is Gold Mine. Gold Mine has long been used in PvP, so after mining drop a proximity mine, damage is nearby enemies when touched. And if you mine a full chunk of gold, three pieces, then you drop three proximity mines, and those can actually start dealing some damage. And even a single mine already denies mining from a cobalt. A cobalt can't get to that mine if there's a proximity mine close to it, so that makes it good in PvP. And it's also decent in PvE, although even a pack of raptors or something just goes through your minefield, they don't die to that, they don't deal that much damage. But it's still something. Then there's Dwarven Ambition, Gain Fury. And that adds damage, and it also adds mining speed. And Dwarven Ambition is something that people have already been experimenting with also in PvP. It's one of the bit newer finds. Gold mine used to be like the staple. But Dwarven Ambition also looks really promising. And I actually think Dark Iron Armaments is the weakest. I have used Dark Iron Armaments a lot, but I have not been super happy. It helps the miner tank after it has mined because it gains armored, but it's still not sturdy enough. That armor just doesn't help enough, so that makes it the weakest talent. Darkspear Troll has a really interesting talent set. The number one talent typically for Darkspear Troll is Big Bad Voodoo. Regenerate 20% health every second. So then Troll can start like soloing towers and it's crazy amounts of survivability, especially if you use it in like a Cairn deck so it has more health and then it regenerates and it's just the survivability is off the charts. 
Pentatrol has two damage dealing talents. Headhunting on kill increase attack and movement speed by 10%, stacks to 50%, and Servant Sting gain poison. Headhunting is the more popular one of these, and it can be good if you have a strong frontline and then Troll starts dealing a ton of damage, but then Troll tends to outrun your allies because it gets all that movement speed and then it just runs away alone and dies off or something. And Serpent Sting, I like that because I love poison, so Serpent Sting is actually my favorite for a damage talent for Troll. It's great damage against individual big targets, and then when you add that to other poison minis, and you get all of the poison stacking in, then it's just wonderful. So I just love poison in this game nowadays, so Serpent Sting is my choice for damage increase, but Big Bad Voodoo definitely has its upsides. And the same team continues with my Defias Bandit's talent choices. I actually recommend getting Deadly Poison. Uh, gain Poison, because that adds so much damage. Bandits don't deal a lot of damage, with Deadly Poison they do deal a lot of damage. It just adds a ton of damage and synergizes with other Poison Minis. There are still uses for Pick Lock, earn an extra 2 gold when opening chests. Yeah, if there's a map and there's suitable chests, Pick Lock can still do great, great things. But Deadly Poison is just a universal talent for this one. Then there's Last Resort on Death Stun the target for 3 seconds. It can give you a little bit of control, but it just doesn't, doesn't hold a candle to the poison. I think Drake has two potentially useful talents. By far the most popular one is Mother Drake, periodically summon a whelp egg, without your whelp egg talents though. So that's going to add just a lot of eggs along your path, and that's pretty great. Engulfing flames can add some damage. Damaging enemies burns them, so that adds some DPS. Drake already has a lot of DPS. With Engulfing Flames, Drake has just totally bonkers DPS. So, yeah, that can still be useful as well. Then there's Roost. Perch on top of a nearby tower, staying there to defend it. I haven't found any use for Roost. I think Drake remains vulnerable, even though it's sort of protecting the tower, and I don't like that one at all. So, Mother Drake and then Engulfing Flames would be my choices. Earth Elemental has two useful talents as well. My favorite is Obsidian Shard, on death split into two smaller Earth Elementals. So it's even stickier, it keeps tanking even longer, it takes longer for enemies to kill, I just love that. There are some uses for ready to rumble though, taunt on deploy. So sometimes you are also in positions where you have stuff attacking and you really want to save those DPS units, but the enemy is not going to change their target, but if you have taunt, then you can deploy the earth elemental, it's going to taunt and you're going to get the attention. So it can be useful, but it's not nearly as sticky as earth elemental with obsidian shard. And then the shrapnel bass destroying a tower deals damage to nearby enemies, but I just don't find that one useful at all. For execute, I would always, always pick bloodthirsty first. Bloodlust allies within spell area for 10 seconds. So you deal damage to the target, and you send something like Harpies in, you use Execute with Bloodthirsty, the boss takes damage from the Execute, and then Harpies get Bloodlust, they deal so much damage, it's just, it's great, it's one of the main finishers in this game. Other than that, well, there's Overpower, knock enemies away from the cast location. I have seen some clever strategic uses for Overpower, it actually can be detrimental to have Overpower, but it can, for example, like move the amp switches at Machina Thermoplug, because it knocks them away. So there's some really weird stuff that Overpower can do, but it's niche and it's nowhere near as universally useful as Bloodthirsty. And then the Skilling Spree, if an enemy is killed, the next Horde Mini costs one less. Yeah, discounts are nice, but Execute deals percentage damage, it's rarely killing stuff. And it has to be Horde Mini, so no, too many, too many conditions, it's just not good. For Fire Elemental, my choice is always Immolation Aura. Periodically damage nearby enemies. Tank with area of effect damage, that's always great. Then when you take Fire Elemental into a dungeon, and you get the Lifesteal Relic, and then it steals Slice while it deals AoE damage, it's totally bonkers. So always, always, always Immolation Aura. Then there's Molten Core, on death summon a pool of lava, damaging enemies within, hmm, kind of not that great, and find the flames taking elemental damage increases, damage dealt by 10%, stacks to 30%. Situationally can increase damage a little bit, but I mean, that aura of AoE damage, it's just so great that it's always Immolation Aura first. 
Firehammer has two generic damage increase talents and then one niche talent. The niche talent is Molting Middle, deal 50% more damage to flying enemies, does not affect flying bosses by the way, so yeah, you might find some uses for that, like underlevel doing Onyxia, maybe there's something that you can get done in that one for example, but overall Molting Middle is, is not really, not really one, something that I would want to pick. So then there's Heightened Rage and there's Blazing Speed. Heightened Rage. Heightened Rage can give you multiple levels. If you enter combat, you gain that rage, you gain level, you exit combat. Rage goes away, and then you enter new combat, you gain fury again, you gain level. So Heightened Rage, if you send your Firehammer from your base, and you expect it to fight like a couple of times first and then a final battle, that would be three levels. That's totally, totally bonkers. That's incredibly strong. So Heightened Rage has the biggest upside. It has the most potential out of these damage dealing talents. And yeah, I do like that one a lot. There's also Blazing Speed. Fear builds up to 40% higher. And Blazing Speed on your first encounter, Blazing Speed is better than Heightened Rage. So Blazing Speed is going to give you more damage, but on your second encounter, Heightened Rage starts to pull ahead. So Blazing Speed is the fastest damage increase. If you're going to fight just once, Blazing Speed is the strongest but then it starts to lose out on Heightened Rage. So overall, Heightened Rage, I believe, should be a first pick, and Blazing Speed should be your second one. I have seen all three Flame Waker talents used. I use Engulf the most myself. Damaging enemies burns them. So it adds more damage to Flame Waker, and damage is good. I do see a lot of people also swearing by Backdraft. Successive attacks increase Flame Wave distance resets on movement. So Backdraft range... The first hit is going to be at the same time as Engulf hit. So Engulf starts to deal more damage immediately, but then once you hit with Backdraft multiple times, if the fight continues there, you start to hit the back line, and that has value as well. So Backdraft is a, is a viable option. And then there's Heat Stroke, damaging enemies, daisies them, and I think that's overall just underwhelming. For footmen, I generally prefer Shield Bash, periodically stun the target for one second. Stuns are useful. Reset targeting, gain a little bit of reprieve from their damage. I just like that a lot. I also see Fortification see a lot of play. Gain 30% extra empty health. So if you use these in a healing deck with Shaman or with Tyrion, so that the 30% health can be filled, well then yeah, that's going to give footmen a lot more health. So that can also be powerful, but only if you're in a healing deck. And then there's last stand, armor increases to 75% damage reduction when no other footmen are nearby. Yeah, you can split push them, and then you can have two footmen doing their last stands on opposite sides of the map. But still, it usually doesn't do enough to warrant picking that one as your talent. Crosswolf Shaman is one of those rare minis that has a talent that completely changes the game. In fact, it has two of such talents. But one is above all others, and that's Earth Shield. Earth Shield grant armored to a nearby ally, ability has one charge. So the nearest ally, first war shaman can fight when you deploy it, it's going to give that armored. So you give armored to Fire Elemental, or to Dragizet, or to Abomination, and they are so incredibly tanky, they are just so great. There are like several heroics where that is just going to completely change your experience and make it so much easier. So Earth Shield would always be my first pick, because it just completely changes the game in so many, so many ways. Then there's also the Earthwall Totem, which can be useful in some specific circumstances. There can be some PvP decks built around that one, although none are in the top meta right now, because it's one of the few ways to heal your base. So you can heal your base in PvP, and then you can maybe play control and win. But you can rarely win in PvE through healing, so it's not use it's only useful in PvP if the meta is suitable for it. Then there's Lightning Mastery, but I don't like that one at all. Range attack change to three nearby targets, because Shaman has so low base damage. A little bit more base damage just doesn't do anything for it. So that Earth Shield, just pick the Earth Shield, please, because it's going to make your experience of the game so much better. Generally, the most useful talent for Gargoyle is Wing Buffet. Because with Wing Buffet, increased move speed by 33%, so it's going to flap a little bit faster, and it's going to move faster, and it's so slow, so that's just always useful. I have sometimes seen Obsidian Statue being used. On death, summon a statue with taunt, lasts until destroyed. 
So you can use that in coordinated pushes, you can use that to tank for your other minis, you can even block some of stuff with that, because statue is an object on the map, so that then you cannot get through that. So there are some, some quirky things that you can do with the obsidian statue, but wing buffet is just by far the most generic. Then there's aerial superiority, but that's way too situational, it just, it just doesn't help enough at all. For Ghoul, I clearly prefer Bone Shield. Cannibalizing grants armored for 10 seconds. And that helps the Ghoul tank, so very often you're in positions where Ghoul is tanking, some stuff starts to die, so Ghoul starts to eat. Okay, it's going to get armored. It's just eating, everyone is hitting at it and it's eating, and your other minis are going to handle the enemies. That's a typical Ghoul use scenario, and Bone Shield is just good there. Whereas Taste for Blood, okay, adds some damage sometimes, but usually your Ghoul is just eating. Or Ravenous grants bloodlust, but your ghoul is just eating. So none of the damage talents really make sense, whereas Bone Shield is great. No Brute basically has two options. I like to use Rabbit, reduce deploy cost by one and gain the cycle trait, because then we have Null Brute that costs only two and that's pretty sweet, so cost reduction is good. Then there's Thick Hide, gain armor. And that's good against physical damage, but when you think about it, that's still clearly less than half of Molten Giant's health at half Molten Giant's cost, so is it still tanky enough? I don't think it's quite tanky enough, but that can be an option. In some maps it can even be better. And then there's Pillage, DLC each damage, but that's not very useful at all. For Goblin Sappers, I would always go with Turbo Boots. Turbo Boots make them so much more effective tower killers. For example, if you're facing a Rocket Tower, and you send Turbo Boot Sappers, then both of them will connect and they will take down the tower, whereas if your Sappers don't have Turbo Boots, the tower is going to hit at least one of them first, and then that's going to die and they don't have the power to take down the tower, so always Turbo Boots. Extra Boom, well, yeah, it adds some damage, so if you're, especially if you're pushing up really high and slow Sappers are enough, you're able to make a distraction, then getting another Sapper in, then that just means that you can get something down even if you're out-leveled. Whereas screwed gunpowder on death burn nearby enemies just doesn't do anything unless the sappers failed to do what they were supposed to do, so I just don't like that talent at all. Riffin Raider is a wonderful little cycle mini, and actually all three of its talents have seen play. There's Mighty Throw, which allows you to outrate some enemies. Then there's Odin's Fury, and that's just going to add so much DPS, and then actually Riffin Raider is going to deal a significant DPS with that. And then there's airdrop, which if you can set it up so that you can get multiple levels on something, especially in PvP, then that can potentially be strong. But overall, I would take Mighty Throw and Odin's Fury first. I don't like airdrop nearly as much. And then Mighty Throw and Odin's Fury, they are good in different occasions. So both have their uses. Mighty Throw is probably the most overall usable one, because it adds survivability also for the Griffin Rider, because in many exchanges against something like Harpies, for example, it gets to shoot just so much easier. But Odin's Fury, that DPS is pretty sweet as well, so you kind of want to have that as an option, if possible. For Harpies, the choice is simple. I take Infectious Vibes, gain poison. I've already said poison is super, super good in this game. Harpies hit fast, hit often, they poison stuff, it just adds bonkers amounts of DPS to Harpies. Harpies DPS without the infectious swipes and with them cannot even be compared. It's it's totally different and it's it's awesome. There are some uses for trinket collectors, gain the minor trait, but cost increased by one. There are some maps where you might want to farm with Harpies, but they are very few and far between, so swipes is by far better. Then there's Talon Dive, deal double damage on first attack. It's good against some medium sized targets, but it generally is just inferior to poison and I would not pick that one. I mean, it's just infectious swipes all the way. For Harvest Golem, I would always pick Unstable Core. On death, stun nearby enemies for 3 seconds. Stun is great, Harvest Golem is going to die, stun, revive itself, die again, stun again. That's 6 seconds of stun, great stalling abilities, it's just wonderful. There's Trojan Chickens, spawns angry chickens, add some damage, but I don't think that's nearly as good, and then Bountiful Harvest on death apply heal over time effect to nearby allies, that's just far weaker, if, you, if your tank is already dead, well yeah, that heal over time is not going to save you, so core, core is by far the best. Volinov has three viable talents, I do consider Inner Fire to be the strongest. Allies gain armored and resist for 5 seconds. It heals them up, and typically you heal them up when they're in combat, and then no matter what's coming at them, they are going to take less damage, so that's just super, super strong. 
Renew adds that heal over time effect, it's okay-ish, especially if you heal them after the combat, but generally the inner fire is just stronger. Then there are some specific uses for Amplify Magic. Effects are doubled on all elemental minis. So if your deck has elemental minis, if you're facing a lot of elemental minis, who know also deals damage, then, then situationally there can be places where Amplify Magic is actually super strong, but it requires very specific circumstances, so Inner Fire is generally the strongest. The Hunter's Talent is generally choice between Elven Might and Shadow Meld. Typically, Shadow Meld is the one that has been used in PvP, Stealth and Ambush, so it's harder to interact with and it deals big damage when it comes out of Stealth. And Elven Might is the one that has seen more play in PvE, deal 50% additional damage to the initial target, so you don't care so much about Stealth and you just want consistent DPS. Then there's Darnassian Steel, Clay bounces an additional 3 times. It used to also give plus 1 range, that was undocumented, but that was a bug and that has been fixed since and that makes Darnassian Steel just now far inferior. So it's between consistent damage or that stealthiness. Both are fine, you can't go wrong with either really. Living Bomb is generally strong without a talent, it does not require a talent to be used. But when you choose a talent, there's two real options. I don't consider Burn of Fate to be very strong at all that day, it just doesn't do enough, it's only movement speed slow. But there's Chain Reaction, Splash Damage inflicts Living Bomb. It cannot come back, so it cannot, so it blasts away, and then another explosion, and then it would come back. That does not happen. But still, those secondary explosions can be really powerful, and Chain Reaction has the biggest upside of these talents. When it's good, it's really good. Because if you can get a lot of those secondary explosions off, then it can deal so much damage. Whereas Blast Radius also burn enemies within 10, Blast Radius is the most added damage on average, because even if you don't have any additional targets, Blast Radius is still steady increase in damage. So if you just try to look at, okay, how am I going to get most value out of Living Bomb overall, on average, you pick Blast Radius. But Chain Reaction has the bigger upside, because when it's really good, it's really good. So I would still pick Chain Reaction first, because Living Bomb is perfectly viable without any talents, and then when you have use of the chain reaction, you really see that. The talent choice for Meat Wagon is simple, it's Filet Trebuchet. It's generally the best because it adds more range, it allows new strategies, Meat Wagon can engage from so far away, it's just... There's no real alternative to it. If there's any alternative, well I guess it's Greased Gears, Gain Fury, so you can get some more damage out of Meat Wagon, it already has a lot of range, but that extra range is just so incredibly strong. And Meat and Bones is actually one of the few talents that's actually actively bad. You don't want it. It's, it's just bad for you. It, it makes that mini worse. So don't pick that big fillet trebuchet. I'm not a huge fan of any Molten Giant talents. They all add a little bit of something, but it's also perfectly viable without any of them. Blood of the Mountain adds a little bit of damage when Molten Giant dies. Threatening Presence Taunt can be helpful, draws attention to the Molten Giant. It is a tank after all, so you want stuff to hit it. And then there's Bolster, so if you can take some towers down, then Molten Giant can heal up. But how often is it really going to take those towers down? Maybe once during its lifespan, at most. So it's a bit situational. I've been using Blood of the Mountain the most out of these, but... They're all quite niche. For Mountaineer, I would generally pick Intimidation to give the bear taunt so that the dwarf can be saved. So that's the most generic talent out of these. There are situational uses for Mend Pets, heal up to three additional nearby beasts when healing the bear, but obviously only in beast decks. And Frenzy Spirit, when Bear or Mountaineer dies, the other gains Bloodlust. I don't like that one. I don't, just don't like that one. I think when one of those dies, then the Bloodlust just doesn't help enough at that point. Well, look, Tide Hunters actually have three useful talents. Safety Bubble, deploy the bubble that blocks the first attack. It's really good because Smurlocks are really fragile. Careful Aim, so you gain more range, which means that you get to shoot first, which is also great. Morlocks, deploy one additional Murloc, so if you could just sit and stand and wait and be in your place and shoot, then that would be the most DPS. In general, I prefer Safety Bubble. Because Murlocs are fragile, and Safety Bubble means that if something tries to shoot at them once, they survive that and they get to do, do more things. So that's my number one pick, but all of these are actually pretty good. For Necromancer, I highly prefer Jeweled Skulls. 
summon skeletal mages instead of skeletons, because I love those mages. They're ranged, they apply frost, what is there not to like? It's just wonderful talent. So I really, really like that talent. There are some situations where Cult of the Damned is actually stronger on kill summon a skeleton. If there's a lot of small units and then Necromancer can kill those, then you can summon a skeleton army. And that can, yeah, that can be better than a couple of mages, I admit. But mages are still generally more useful. Then there's Breath of the Dying, on death summon five skeletons. I just, I don't like my units to die. So I don't think that's as useful as stuff that makes Necromancer much stronger when Necromancer is alive. For Ogre Mage, it's mostly a choice between two talents. There's Frost Firebolt, gain frost, so you reduce the attack and movement speed of enemies, which is nice. Or it's Avarice, gain Bloodlust when Bloodlusting an ally, so then you have a Bloodlusted Ogre Mage, which is a lot more damage. It's generally between those two. I do like Frost Firebolt a little bit more myself, but Avarice is also nice. I don't like Ignite as much, burn enemy targets. Ignite deals less damage generally than Avarice, because Bloodlust is more damage than comes from burn. Obviously, if your Ogre Mage only gets in like one shot and then it's killed, then that burn will deal more damage. But overall, Ignite is just usually much weaker than Avarice. For Plague Farmer, the choice is clear. It's Splashing Pumpkins, increase range by plus one and double the splash area. With Splashing Pumpkins, Plague Farmer outranges regular towers. Without it, it does not. So that's just such a huge difference that nothing else really matters. That's, that's the choice. There is also a parting gift, on death summon a pumpkin, when it touched it poisons nearby enemies, okay, well, it deals a little bit of poison. Virulence on kill poison enemies near the target. So virulence does add some more damage, and its effect can also hit flying units, which is actually quite nice. But yeah, that range is just so far superior that you should always pick splashing pumpkins. The most commonly used polymorph talent is Golden Fleece. One ship becomes gold and killing it grants one gold. So that's effectively a discount on polymorph and it's pretty good. I have sometimes also played with explosive ships, so killing a ship damages nearby enemies. That's also, that's actually not bad. I do like it sometimes. And then the stable transfiguration lasts twice as long, but ships regenerate health very quickly. So that means that you try to polymorph something so that you get to kill something else instead and you come back to those later or hopefully you just win the game. I don't like that at all. I don't think there are many opportunities where you can actually ignore something and get something else killed in the meanwhile. But some people have tried to use that one as well. And generally the Golden Fleece is the surest choice. Prowler has three talents that can all potentially be useful, although I would always pick on the Prowler first. Gain stealth and stun the target when attacking from stealth. It's just wonderful. It makes your prowler so that it's not getting shot at all the time. Then it just charges an ogre mage, for example, stuns it and kills it before it recovers from stun. That's wonderful. Predatory Instincts does some of the same things, because Predatory Instincts means that Prowler is going to one-shot a bunch of stuff. Okay, it doesn't stun them, but it kills them in one shot. However, it does not gain stealth, so it still remains a target, so I just like on the Prowl better. And then there's Pack Leader, grants nearby Beast allies 30% additional damage, and if you try to build some kind of Beast Swarm deck, then it can work, but generally on the Prowl is my choice. Pyromancer has two talents that see play, Pyroblast and Conflagrate. Place of Glory is just, it's just bad. And I always pick Pyroblast first. Deal triple damage on the first attack. So very often on the very first attack you just kill stuff and then the fight is over. This applies only once after you have deployed Pyromancer, so you can't just kill something and then later on it fights again. No, it doesn't work. But it's still just such a huge difference. There are some specific instances where you like to use Conflagrate, splash area is doubled, so you will have that large area of effect, but almost all the time it's better to kill something instantly than it is to deal damage to a larger area, so Pyroblast would always be my first pick. Quillbor is a mini that's perfectly fine without any talents. All talents add something to it, it actually has three playable talents, and I think the rough order of those talents from what I can consider now, is that Bristleback is the best, Bramble Burst is second best, and Tunnel Vision is actually the weakest. So Bristleback, deal a small amount of damage to melee attackers. It's the most general purpose talent, so melee attackers come at Quillbore and they take damage already when Quillbore is just burrowing up. It's most noticeable if enemy uses chickens, so chickens attack Quillbore and then they all just die. 
It doesn't deal a whole lot of damage in a single go, but against some enemies that just don't have a lot of health, deal tiny amounts of damage attack often, then it can be very noticeable. Bramble Burst inflicts poison on nearby enemies when emerging, while well, poison is strong, and this is one way that you can keep your poison stacks on the target. Poison wears off after 5 seconds, so if your, all your poison minis have died, you can deploy Quillbore to get another 5 seconds of poison on the target, and that can be beautiful. And then there's Tunnel Vision deploy much more quickly, well it deploys all the same, it comes on the board at the same time, it just can't do anything for longer period of time without tunnel vision because it's burrowing up. It can be targeted during that time though. So with tunnel vision you're faster at opening chests, you're faster at killing cobots for example, so there are some uses for tunnel vision, but when you use Quillbore as a tank then tunnel vision doesn't really do much. All three Raptor Talents have seen some play, although I think strength in numbers is the best one because deal 10% more damage for each other Raptor nearby. Then if you're in a dungeon and you get strangled on commendation and you get more Raptors, even though those Raptors don't have strength in numbers themselves, but your Raptors do and yeah, it can, it can be pretty crazy. So I think that's overall the strongest. Then there's fast food on kill, heal a small amount of damage. And it actually heals the entire pack. So if you face a lot of small enemies, you kill them and the entire pack is healed and the raptors can just become just become incredibly sturdy with that. And I have even seen some PvP uses for motivation, gain bloodlust while a chest or gold veins nearby, where people have been using single raptors to push their minis to combat, especially Emperor Torsen. So you put Emperor Torsen in front, you put a single raptor behind, and raptors start going to start pushing the Emperor Torsen so it goes faster and then it gets bloodless well. Just a gold vein is nearby so it pushes even faster and yeah, okay that's kind of an niche use. So strength in numbers is probably your first pick. Safe Pilot is the most heavily nerfed mini in the history of the game. Gnomish Cloaking device had its ambush removed and coming in hot lost 33% crash damage. And then there was also a slight nerf to crash damage overall. So yeah, Safe Pilot took a lot of hits and it's still good. And now after the nerf, I think Gnomish Cloaking Device is the strongest talent. You get two hits unless your opponent can deal with the stealth Safe Pilot. It doesn't come from ambush anymore, so the DPS is lower, but it's still the most damage. And you still have the stealth pilot left over after that, so it's just great. Coming in hot suffered greatly from the nerf. I actually think coming in hot was the strongest talent before the nerf, but the nerf hurt, hurt it a lot, because now it doesn't do a lot of damage on crash. It doesn't kill much of anything on crash, so the safe pilot's always killed instantly. Well, then there is the burn effect, so it still kills those minis a little bit later, but burn takes 8 seconds to apply the full damage, so coming in hot just deals damage so incredibly slowly now. I don't like it nearly as much anymore. I still sometimes use it so that it can deploy instantly when it's that valuable. But it's just nowhere near as good as Gnomish Cloaking Device anymore. And there's Gnomish Modernizer, but I haven't found that one useful at all. Skeleton Party is an interesting mini, also because Skeleton Party talents are such that sometimes you rather play Skeleton Party without any talent than by using your talent. And Skeleton Party is actually a really strong mini without a talent, so if you don't have any talents yet, then sometimes Skeleton Party can just be a great idea. The talent that I would pick first, if I were to start over now, would be Ritual of Rhyme. Summon five Skeleton Mages who guard the deploy location. Well, they're not going to move, so sometimes you just don't want that. But if you deploy those to important locations, you have something coming in and you deploy them to take a tower, you deploy them on a bridge and they shoot down, they can just do stuff that nothing else can do. And that's why I would pick it, even though sometimes I would want to disable that and use the regular party instead. Then there's Corpse Run, gain plus one level for each deploy after the first, maximum plus three levels. It doesn't actually add that many levels, you don't deploy the mini that many times, but it's a little bit useful and you never have to disable it, so it's okay. And then there's the five man. Summons a skeleton tank, rogue, priest and two mages. And five man, it's useful all round talent, but there's also some, some weaknesses. Like five man is useful because five man can actually take a tower. Five man, there's the tank and a healer and there's damage and that can take a tower. However, five man tank also taunts. So if you use Skeleton Party for, to deal damage, you have an Earth Elemental up, you put Skeleton Party with 5 man, it's going to taunt the enemy and then the enemy is going to kill your Skeleton Party. So that sucks. So 5 man is also a talent that you sometimes would need to disable. So I would generally pick Ritual of Rhyme 
Corpsron and Fireman, you could argue for either one of those. I've been using Corpsron more, but it's it's a matter of taste. For skeletons, my pick is incredibly clear. It's exhume. If deployed near a tower or meeting a stone, deploy plus two additional skeletons. Does not count bosses, unfortunately, but does count enemy meeting stones, does count enemy towers. So you attack a tower and you get more skeletons. It's just incredibly useful. Gaining taunt or gaining armor, gaining resist on such small minis, that just doesn't do a whole much. So exhume, by far the best talent for skeletons. Smoke Bomb has two strong talents and one weird talent. There's True the Shadows, effect that minis move 50% faster until on stealth, always useful. There's Band of Thieves, grant plus one level to cycle minis within, so you smoke bomb something like Sappers, for example, gave them plus one level, useful. And then there's Stranger in the Night, effects apply to enemies as well. So sometimes you can affect what is going to fight, because you can hide some stuff from you, from enemy, so you can dictate fights with that, but overall, yeah, it's strategic, but it also gets a little weird. So it's mostly true the shadows for general purpose, or band of thieves with specific deck construction, where you use cycle minis and you gain levels for those. For spiderlings, I would always pick any venom. Deal twice as much poison damage. Poison is super good. Twice as much poison is twice super good. It's just, it's just awesome. Then bloated carapace, explode on death, poisoning nearby enemies. Okay, a little bit of damage, but I mean, you would rather have them alive and dealing all that poison damage with any venom. And then there's frost spite, gain frost, but it's single target frost. And when you have frost, you want it to be area frost so that everyone is slowed down. Everything is slower and you gain real advantage. Single target frost just doesn't do the same thing. So always end venom for spiderlings. Stone of Torin basically has two viable talents. There's Momentum, which is my favorite, because Momentum allows Torin to do something that it otherwise cannot do and nothing can do. After connecting a charge, immediately charge the second time if possible. So first it charges into the tank that's coming first, and then it charges into the back line. And that's really, really powerful, so I would always pick Momentum first. Although there are also advantages to Pummel. After connecting a charge, stuns the target for 3 seconds. So stuns are also good, but stunning a tank and letting the backline hit you isn't that attractive a proposition. Then there's Provoke after connecting a charge, taunt nearby enemies. But typically, Stone of Torrent just isn't that much of a tank that you would want it to taunt. So I don't like that one at all. For Vultures, it's basically a choice between Feeding Frenzy and Migration. So Feeding Frenzy, the flock gains bloodlust for 5 seconds when spawning a new Vulture. And that can be a lot of damage. I think that's my favorite one. Although Migration, all additional Vultures spawn at your base. Means that you spawn some Vultures and then it's like you would have played Vultures again. You don't get as much immediate effect, but you get some, some lasting effects from Vultures. So there are some, some advantages to that one. And then the Tendon Rip attacks Daze enemies for 3 seconds, but Daze's only movement speed slow, so it doesn't affect attacking at all, so I don't like that. But probably Feeding Frenzy is the best one. Ozone Grunts have 3 interesting talents. Blood Pact is the universally useful one. When a Grunt dies, the other gains Bloodlust. But you don't want them to die that much, so I don't really like that too much. Then there's Command. Nearby Beast allies gain 30% additional damage. If you can get your Beast to go with the Grunts, yeah, that can be great, but Grunts are really slow, most Beats are really fast, so it's kind of hard to make it work. And then there's Guard Duty. Remain at Deploy location until entering combat. And after they enter combat, then they can start attacking. So it doesn't usually do much, but there have been some hilarious strategies where you just keep getting Grunts near your tower and or something, and then... You wait for enemy to engage them, and then there's a huge grunt attack. Not not the best possible strategy, but it is a plan. So for grunts, all options are available. For Warzone Raider, it's a choice between Saboteur and Thunder Arm. Saboteur, damaging a tower reduces its damage dealt by 50% for 3 seconds. So you do a lot more against towers. They're not going to be able to kill you near as effectively, and you just deal a bunch of damage. Then the Thunder Armor damaging an armored enemy removes their armor. Situationally very powerful, because then it just allows all of your attacks to get through. I don't like raising focus, become a siege unit ignoring enemy minis. Sure, then it just goes for those towers and goes for those bosses, but I still don't think it's that useful. Welbecks have one of the most game-changing talents, Flame Burst. 
Flame burst damage nearby enemies when hatching. Only damages ground enemies, by the way. Does not damage flying enemies, although after they hatch, the first attack can damage flying. It makes the unit a lot stronger. It's just, it's totally game changing, and I would always pick that first. Then there's Rooker. When one egg hatches, the others hatch immediately. It's fine. It used to add another whelp, so there were four whelps if you used Rooker, it, in which case it was really strong. But after the nerf, it's just not quite as strong, so I would always prefer Flame Burst. And Chromatic Plating X Game Taunt, I just don't like that one at all. I think it's significantly weaker. Witch Doctor has three useful talents, although I think the winner is Spirit Ward. On kill, grant a shield to nearby allies, absorbing the next hit against them. It's just, it always has survivability, whether you fight against small enemies, whether you fight against big enemies, it's always useful. The shield does only last for 5 seconds. If you're not hit within 5 seconds, the shield is just going to dissipate. So there is that, but still, I think that's a great talent. The one that I liked second best is Amplify Curse. Enemies killed by the curse explosion also explode. Or enemies killed by something else at the same time as the explosion happens also explode. It's situationally strong, especially when there is a strong mini surrounded by small minis, like Dark Miss Brood Queen is one where I have used this, so I blow up some eggs and I they all blow up and damage the gargoyle. That's that sort of stuff. That's where Amplify Curse can be really powerful. And then there's Alchemist, periodical drop of potion, granting bloodlust to the first ally that touches it. The potions are dropped every 12 seconds, they last for 10 seconds. I just don't like them very much. You drop a potion at your base, someone picks it up and it runs faster than enemy base, but the bloodlust wears off before any fighting really happens. So I don't like that so much, but I have seen some people like it and use it as well. But Spirit Ward is just generally always useful. And one more mini, and it's Vorgen. And for Vorgen, I always pick Premeditation. Increase ambush damage by 50%. That adds so much damage, it's just, it's just awesome. You drop Vorgen to assassinate somebody, so let it assassinate it. It's great. I have seen Lone Wolf used as well. On deploy grant, plus one gold if no allies are nearby. The range is pretty far, so you have to be pretty far from your allies, but that does effectively make Vorgen cost too, so there are some uses for that one as well. Whereas Frenzy on kill gain bloodlust for 10 seconds, Vorgen is a single target damage dealer, it's not going to kill stuff that often, that bloodlust is not going to happen that often, so I don't like that one very much. I always go for premeditation. So that's all the talents for the minis. I hope this helps you decide and pick the right talents, because remember, when your minis are uncommon, you can buy one talent and you cannot change that talent until you get your mini to rare. So it's important to choose well. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.